welcome back to a new video. Today it's going to be all about the Stabilo Woody pencils and I received these at Christmas and I've been really enjoying using them and I want to talk all about them in today's video. So first up I'm going to explain what they are. They are actually for children I think. They aren't a like, professional art supply. They are a three-in-one pencil so you can use them on glass and other surfaces because they are kind of waxy, they're not like a usual pencil. And here you can see the 10 pack, so I have a pack of 10 and then I also bought a white because I think that's one of the pencils I really wanted to try out. And I'm also going to be sharing some comparisons later in the video. So I'm going to share how they compare to the Neo Color 2 pastels, which I think are the closest art supply I have to them. And also share how they work on lots of different mediums. First though, I'm going to be sharing some clips of using them on their own as a full illustration. It didn't turn out very well and I'm not very pleased with how it turned out, so I'm only going to be sharing like the process rather than the end result, but mostly because I'm using them in different ways. So they are water soluble, so you'll see that I use them as paint and also test out how they blend together. So although the illustration didn't turn out very nicely, I do hope it's useful in showing how you can use these in your art. So first up, I am going to talk about how they are water soluble, like I mentioned, and how you can use them and blend them together and use them sort of as paint. So they are three in one. They act as a pencil, a wax crayon, and then also as a paint. Because although they feel like they are sort of waxy and oil based, they are water soluble. So you can see here where I've wet my paintbrush and there's no other pigment on my brush. I'm just using the pigment I already laid down on the page and I'm just blending those together. I wanted to see how it worked with multiple colours rather than just putting down the one colour and they do work perfectly well as paint and you'll also see later on where I put down the pigment straight onto a paper palette. I also tried putting the woody straight onto the wet area and that softened the nib and that worked out really nicely as well just to add extra texture and that's an extra way that you can use it and I really wanted to see if I could build up the pigment and it layered really nicely. So onto blending now. I wanted to see how they blended together just as they are because obviously they do feel quite waxy and oil based and I definitely found that they didn't blend together very well. Unlike how I usually use my Neo colours which do blend really nicely together, I found these weren't really comparable they sort of just sat on top of the other one and although they layer quite well it didn't blend together so it's like a really harsh pigment that doesn't really soften and so when you are putting a colour on top of it it layers on top rather than merging together into a new shade and I think that's why I struggled with this illustration simply because there are limited colours and I couldn't sort of mix them to make new shades. I've had a look and there are 24 colours in total so I do only have 11 but there are also pastel colours, so they are very bright and obviously marketed as children's pencils and children's art supplies, so you're not going to find like natural or muted shades. So now I'm going to show how to use them as paint again, but applying the pigment from the pencil directly to my paper palette. So I'm just drawing that on top and scribbling on some colour so I can use a wet brush again to mix them together. The black was quite pigmented so it did turn out into like a sort of grey but it was really highly pigmented and I definitely didn't have an issue with not being able to make it enough colour. I think it layered really nicely, it felt very much like watercolour or very translucent gouache so I think that worked really really well and I'm definitely impressed with them and how much pigment you can get from them. I also played around again with using this pink over the top and because the page was still quite wet it didn't layer on top massively but it did sort of carve into the pigment that was already there whereas if I had waited for it to dry I think it would have layered a lot better but again I will show how they work on top of other mediums later on with some swatches. So like I said I was trying to make new colours because I did find them too bright for me just doing that at the bottom with this river layering on the blues Again, I did find the black to be a bit overpowering, so I think if you are trying to do this as well, it would work best if you used less black and more of the other colours. So definitely a lot for me to learn whilst I was testing all these new techniques. 
and so far I have just been using them in most of my artwork as like finishing touches and again I'll share more about that and how I prefer to use them later on in the video. So I did a similar thing up in the sky and I just laid on a lot of the colour and this technique where I've really laid it on thickly meant that the paint felt more like gouache rather than watercolour and you can really see the texture that comes up. The paint that it made was really really thick and so you're getting extra brush mark texture there as well as obviously the colour and so I, again I was quite impressed with this. Next up is the all important white test and I think this is a shade that a lot of us artists are always striving for to get a really pigmented white. So you can see here where I wanted to do like two flowers, um, like circular flowers and you can see at the bottom I left a space around the pencil and so that's the white of the page and then I'm trying here to layer on some white over the green and actually it didn't do too badly, it did layer up so the more I added to the page and the more pigment went down onto the paper the more I could make it a bit more opaque but as a white I didn't find it that great and I was slightly disappointed. So here you can see some of my tests on different mediums. We've got the woody on woody. This was supposed to be near colour on woody but you can see that I went wrong and I did woody on near colour so I swapped those around but you can see that it does layer over the top but it's not like a really bright white it's basically just lightening the pigment that's already there but I do think it was better than the near colour so here is the white near colour over the woody which didn't work very well I think because the woody is so waxy and it was a similar thing with the white near colour on the darker near colour here I wanted to test out the white on a really dark background colour, so on the black. There's the woody on woody, again kind of making it a grey and layering on top. And then the near colour on woody basically didn't do anything at all. It lightened it a little bit but mostly just put pigment onto the near colour itself. And then we have the woody on top of near colour, which I think worked better than the woody on woody. And lastly, near colour on near colour, which didn't do anything at all. So here's some close-ups, you can see it's basically just lightening the pigment behind but the best one was the white woody on near colour. A question that I got on Instagram was about how you can get really fine details with them and because they are so chunky obviously they're not supposed to be used for really fine details and very precise line work but I do find that I can be quite specific with them I can get quite thin lines compared to what actually the nib is. So I really enjoy using them for like line work here on the houses, that's how I've used them before. And I think that works fine with the like scale of this illustration, but if I wanted it super precise I just don't think these are the medium to do that. But like I said they do layer really nicely on top of quite a lot of things, especially when I've used them previously on gouache. And to sharpen them I actually have a specific Stabilo woody sharpener which looks like this. But I also have tried to sharpen them with a craft knife and just doing like the old fashioned way of sharpening a pencil. And that also worked well but I think this sharpener is the easiest thing. So I mentioned that I didn't like this illustration and I don't think doing a full illustration is the way to go for me and my artwork. And the way I've been using those and why I've been enjoying them so much is to use them as sort of like a finishing touch. I love to use them as like extra little pops. So you can see here on this palm house illustration that I've drawn, I was using them for line work details along the top and also little pops of colour. So just little areas of extra colour over things like acrylic ink and pan pastel which you can see here. And the reason why I love these is because they make me really loose. They are super chunky so I'm specifically not trying to get that really defined line and I can just feel a bit more playful with them. So now we're on to the different media tests and I think a lot of people were most interested in this. So on the left I've set up some swatches just for these Stabilo woodies. So on the top row I wanted to layer it onto acrylic paint. The row under that is dark acrylic paint, so obviously I did a light shade along the top row and then darker below. And I wanted to see how it worked with the water on top of the acrylic 
and that worked really well still had a lot of pigment and obviously didn't pick up the acrylic below because that's not water soluble and then I tried a lighter shade and a darker shade on top of the dark acrylic so we've got the pink and the black and I did do some white tests as well which obviously we've already covered in this video but it laid really nicely onto the darker acrylic and it also laid perfectly on top of these acrylic ink swatches and the gouache swatches. The pigment is really strong and although I think it struggles with some of the lighter colours, it works better when you're using lighter colours on darker backgrounds rather than the other way around. I also wanted to see how it worked on Neo Colour just on its own. So you can definitely see here, like with the orange, it was struggling over the darker blue Neo Colour, but it worked perfectly on the pastel yellow. It just really struggles with some of the colours on top. Here is another woody on woody, so with the red over the blue, and it kind of darkens the red, it made it sort of a maroon shade. I've gone outside of the swatch so you can see what the colour actually looks like, and again, the white's just sort of lightening it. So it's not like super pigmented and a really bright colour when it goes on top of other things. So now onto the section which is why I was so interested in these Stabilo woodies in the first place, which is how they compare to my favourite art supply which are Neo Colour 2 pastels. So they are very similar in that they are both water soluble and they also feel like wax crayons. I try to compare very similar colours and again I've got the swatches behind, so this top one and the one underneath are acrylic paint. I wanted to see how they compare with being water soluble, so again to see if there are any texture differences, but they are very very similar and obviously you can get a wider range of colours with the Neo Colour 2s, but I do think that they work really well on top of Neo Colours themselves. But we'll get onto those swatches, at the moment I'm just layering the similar colours on top of the paint swatches. You can see here there's very little difference, they are very very similar. This was where I found the biggest difference when I was wetting the woody and the neo colour on top of the darker acrylic swatches. You can see kind of on the left where it's basically taken away from the pigment, whereas when I was wetting the neo colour it was just sort of smushing it around, but the paintbrush was actually taking off the woody and I think that's because they do feel more waxy and it definitely didn't stay on top of the acrylic. So I thought that was quite interesting and I'm also layering on the swatches on these acrylic ink and the gouache swatches. With the acrylic ink it was very similar and I found that the wet paintbrush was actually taking off the woody pigment so it wasn't sort of moving it around on top, it was basically removing it. Whereas the Neo Colours worked much better in keeping that pigment on the page and just spreading it around. And then the last swatches at the bottom there is on gouache. I was using the wrong thing there, I was using Neo Colour. So I just corrected it there and used the red woody on the left and then the Neo Colour on the right. I do think it shows up really well on the gouache with the woodies. But the lighter Neo Colours you can see doesn't have a problem with it. And again, I was wetting the paintbrush, and it definitely works the best on gouache. Very similar in kind of making a maroon shade, but it didn't pull off the pigment with the woody like it did on the acrylic swatches. So here is a close-up of some of the swatches and how the woody and the near colour sits on top. So now I want to move on to using them with just the two supplies, so woody and near colour, and using them on top of each other and vice versa. So here I'm using a red on a blue, you can see the woody on woody on the left and then the woody on neo colour on the right. And it's definitely a lot easier to see on the neo colour, I think it works best as a pair that way round. Whereas the neo colour on the woody here, it's just not showing up at all and I think it's because the woody is more waxy like I've said a few times. Whereas the neo colour does go better on the neo colour, you can see that it does actually layer on top. And it's kind of similar to the woody on woody on the top left, whereas the woody on Neo Colour on the top right is definitely brighter than the Neo Colour on Neo Colour. Lastly, I did swap them around, so I did the red as a base and then the blue on the top. And the woody on Neo Colour was a lot stronger than the Neo Colour on Neo Colour, as you can see here. It's kind of making a muddy colour with the Neo Colour where they're trying to blend together, whereas the blue on the red for the woody 
is just sitting on top really nicely and I was pretty impressed with that test. So that's the end of the video. I hope that was helpful if you are looking at buying the Stabilo Woodies. I don't think you need to rush out and buy them, especially if you already have Neo colours. As you've seen, they do work very similarly and I think the Neo colour is stronger in a lot of ways. But one of the things that comes up a lot with artists is trying to find something that does work over Neo colours because a lot of pencils and other mediums, including Neo colours themselves, don't like going over what's already there. Whereas I think that's where the woody comes in and that's why I prefer to use them as a finishing touch and I know that they'll go over anything I've already got on the page and so using them as highlights and for final details is definitely how I prefer to use them and I think that's where their strength comes in. If you have any questions or if you'd like me to try it on different mediums that I haven't shown here, please do let me know down in the comments. But I do really hope this was useful and thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely week and I will see you next Sunday with a new video. See you later. Thank you.